came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. Verse 2. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed they were very dry. Verse 3. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God to, those, to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Verse 7, so I prophesied as I was commanded. The latter part of verse 7. But there was no breath in them. Sorry, that's the latter part of verse 8. But there was no breath in them. Verse 9, he also said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus said the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them. And they lived, and stood up on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Verse 11, he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, our bones are dry. Our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Verse 12, therefore prophesy and say to them, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O oh my people, and brought you up from your graves, I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. God's word is already blessed. His word is already blessed. Ooh, for the next few moments, I want to speak from the subject, you will breathe again. You will breathe again. These, these 14 verses of the 37th chapter of Ezekiel have been preached in many ways uh, by many, many pastors and preachers. But to fully understand why it appears here. You have to go back to the beginning of this book. It was a Babylonian custom to uh, exile the upper level, uh, upper levels of leadership when they conquered a country. Okay, just give me a little bit of background. Ezekiel was in captivity in Babylonia when the Lord called him to prophesy to those that were with him. Okay, uh, he was instructed to prophesy the judgment against Jerusalem, the uh, people of God as a nation, idol worship, and the captivity of Judah and the fall of Jerusalem. So all of these things he prophesied while he was in captivity to those that were in captive with him. And all of this happens in the first 24 chapters of the book. The Lord commanded him to itemize the sins of the people against God. Some of the things that, that made the list, because there was a long list. It was a real long list. But some of them were worshiping the gods of the Egyptians and sacrificing their children to these unknown gods. Hiding idols in their hearts and thinking that God couldn't see it. Uh, not helping the people of God, but doing more harm for selfish gain. Mm -hmm. In one passage, God said to 
of Jerusalem, or God said that Jerusalem's sin was worse than Sodom. Now, now y'all know that he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of their abominations, right? Yeah. He said that Jerusalem, the sins of Jerusalem was worse than that. Worse than that. And there were three major ways that God was going to pour out his judgment. Uh, by the sword, that's through war. Pestilence, that's disease. And famine, well, you know what that is. You ain't going to have no food. And things were going to get bad. But there was going to be a remnant that survived. Now, as I read this, I, I found out that, that the idol worship didn't begin, you know, while they were in the promised land. It didn't begin with the kings that, that, that had separated the kingdoms. It didn't begin, it began in Egypt. Y'all know how long they've been out of Egypt? It began in Egypt. And it didn't matter how much God pleaded with them from coming out of Egypt in the wilderness to choose him and to follow his ways, to turn from their wicked ways. They chose to follow the ways of their enemies, lusting after power, prestige, wealth, only to be used and cast away by the ones that they desired the most. We've seen that. We can say that's happening right now. That's happening right now. And I didn't understand why God had given me this message when he did. It's a warning, saints. It's a warning. We got to get it together. This is what he said. Through, through Ezekiel the prophet, God gave them a chance to repent individually. And I know we, we hear that the, that the Old Testament is, is the, the type and shadow of the church. God dealt, well, God dealt with the nation, the, the, the church as a whole. And then the New Testament is individualized. But let me tell you, in the book of Ezekiel, God is dealing with both. He's dealing with both. He's judging the nation and individuals. Individuals. He had an angel that 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 he he had an angel that had had a, a marker in his hand. Let me just call it a marker, okay? Um, and then he had some six other angels. That, that had destructive gear, if you will. And everybody that the angel put the mark on, they were saved. Everybody else were, were like killed. It was major bloodshed. These are his chosen people, right? He gave them a chance to repent individually, to turn away from the things that have been passed down from generation to generation that was never right uh, and, and, and you can choose to live or die in your sin. Gave them the opportunity. Kept, kept having the prophets come and tell them, listen, this is what you're doing. God is seeing it. God is saying, get right. Get right. Get right. Judgment is pronounced on several nations around just around the, the children of Israel and, 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 and by chapter 33 the Lord begins restoration and, and the gathering of his people that have been scattered among other regions because you do know and Pastor said this earlier this week when, when you smite the shepherd the sheep will scatter and so they had these, these nations had come in and, and, and taken the kings of of the people of God in, in, in Judah and Israel. And so and so they were, the people were scattering for their, they were running for their lives. And so God begins to gather them in, 
to bring them back. Bring them back. This Jews room by this time has been destroyed, and and the with the the remnant that was left had witnessed it. They had witnessed so much, so much. They had witnessed so much, and God knew their hearts. Verse eleven, and and we read, but. Let me just go through it. Verse 11 in our text, it reveals that the dry bones are the whole house of Israel. The whole nation had lost hope in God. They lost hope in God. These are his people. If you will, let me just bring it to today. Our, the church is losing hope in God. Because of sins of generations and generations of a stuff that has been taught wrong and lived wrong and we just desire wrong and just ain't nobody told us like get right. That's it. That's it. That's it. Dry bones. Whole nation lost hope. And 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 they just knew that God was done with them. They just knew he was finished. He's like, you Y'all know how we do. Y'all know how we do. When we reach that breaking point, we that's I'm done. I'm done. Don't ask me for nothing. Don't don't say nothing. Don't do it. Don't. I'm done. They they believed that God was done because of what God was allowing. They thought that they would die in bondage. But God. Aren't y'all happy? I, I am so grateful for the love of God through his son. Because guess what? If it had not been Jesus, we, we would be facing some of the same fate. So I'm grateful for Jesus. God says to Ezekiel, I'm going to bring, tell them, I'm going to bring you out. And you're going to know that it was me. Because people like to take, <laughs> people like to, to fake like they did some stuff. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> I can say a whole lot up here. I don't have the time. But people like to, to, to portray like it's them all day. Knowing darn on well that somebody else helped them. Somebody else paid the cost. Somebody else paid the way. Somebody else signed the check. Somebody else stood up behind you and said, nah, you're not going to do that to them. But they brag and say, no, it was me. You know I am. It's, no, it's not you. You're going to know that I did it, thus said the Lord. You're going to know that it was me. Tell them, I'm going to bring them out, and you're going to know that it was me. I'm going to put my spirit in you, and you shall live. Meaning, I'm going to bring restoration. Let me tell you, we're going to breathe again. For those of you that are feeling lost, that you don't have any hope, that, that, that you don't know where to turn, you're going to breathe again. God is saying, you're going to breathe again. I am going to bring restoration to you. I am going to, to bring hope to you, and you're going to know. That it was me. You're going to know that I did it. Our thing this year is the goodness of God. The goodness of God. Last year it was testified. Let me tell you, we still need to testify of the goodness of God today. Today. I cannot tell you. I can't tell you where I would be today if it hadn't been for the goodness of God. Life has dealt us all so many blows. Some that have knocked us off our feet. And some of us haven't even gotten up. We still dealing with the blow. But God said, you're going to breathe again. You're going to breathe again. Some of the things that we're dealing with is residue from somebody else. It wasn't even our decision. Had absolutely nothing to do with us. But it's residue that we're carrying.
Yeah. He ain't around because, well, Grandma Jojo did it. Well, Pappy Sam did it. They passed it down to, to Mama So So. They did it. And Daddy have a have a hat did it. And so I gotta do it. No, you don't. No, you don't. The only way to, to, to stop doing what we're doing is to, as my as my Baptist brother and sister say, repent. We need some repentance. Because as my as, as my holiness church has said, uh, holiness is still right. It's still required. God is still requiring that of us to choose right. Just because Jesus is our Savior and he's our advocate does not mean that we still get to live any kind of way. Listen. He chose not to, not to kill them in the wilderness the way that he wanted to because his name was on the line. Listen, he's doing some stuff because his name is on the line. And that's giving us an opportunity to still get it right. We're not going to be perfect as the world tries to make things perfect. But we can do all we can to do right by God. Because that's the requirement. Listen. Stuff is getting real in these here streets. You hear me? It's real. Not only that is it not only is it real in the streets, it's real in our homes. The stuff that we worry about now, we ain't worry about that when I was in my twenties. We ain't worry about that kind of stuff. But we worrying about a whole lot more stuff now that God is not wanting us to have to worry about. Because who's our protector? Who? Who's our strength? Who's our provider? He is our refuge. He is everything that we need. So why are we fretting and running, running around like chickens with our hands cut off? As though we don't know. This is just a reminder and a warning. Listen, we better get it right. Get it right. Because God is coming back. He's coming back. And I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. And it's not our responsibility. Listen, when I encourage you to read this book, this book of Ezekiel, because let me tell you, there's some stuff in there. Like, he talks about Job. He talks Job, Daniel, and, and Noah. He was like, if they were here, they couldn't save their children. They could only save themselves. And we know how Job prayed and, 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 and did offerings for his children, for their salvation. Right? But God says even he couldn't save them. You can only do what you can do. It's not your responsibility to, to take on somebody else's burdens. We better get it right, church. We got to get it right. And let me tell you, this opportunity is now. He's telling us not to give up hope. That we will breathe again. And we will know that he made it happen. We just say hold to his hand. So I'm going to encourage you to hold to his hand. Hold to his hand. It's unchanging. You're not too old. You're not too young. Hold to his hand. Hold to his hand. 